Hello and welcome to Halloween in our kitchen. I'm Andre. This is my husband Rico. Rico will be cooking up another one of his recipes and reviewing another delicious wine. It looks like a red today. It's going to be a chicken dish stuffed with spinach and another one of his sauces. But before we get onto all of that, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. Whilst you're there, you can ring our bell and a thumbs up is always very much appreciated. Cheers and on to you Rico. Well welcome back everybody and first of all just let me thank everybody for taking the time to watch our, our video last week and indeed for all your lovely comments again. Today as Andrew said we're going to be having this red wine. It's a French wine that's from Burgundy, the most famous of French wine regions, a very historical region. region. Famous in the wine world for its Pinot Noir grape and its Chardonnay grape. And this particular one is a Pinot Noir. All the red wines from Burgundy are Pinot Noirs, and, or 95% of them are Pinot Noirs, and 95% of the white wines are Chardonnays. About a year ago, we reviewed a Macon Village, which was, was, was a white Chardonnay from Louis Jadot. But today we have the same winemaker, the same house, Louis Jadot, and we have a Pinot Noir. It's a 2017, it's ready for drinking now, shouldn't keep it for more than another year. And the wine that benefits from being aged in oak barrels for six months, which gives it, helps for the aromas and the complexity of the wine. The winery itself was founded in 1859 by by the Jadot family and they are synonymous with different levels of Burgundian wines. It's 12.5% by volume, it has a natural, natural cork and you'll notice it's this classic burgundy shape of bottle, it's sort of slightly shorter than a normal wine bottle, a wee bit fatter and the punt in the bottle, bottom here is, is very shallow because the bottom is wider than the normal bottles of wine. wine. Looks very nice. Did you give us a price? Well the price of the wine is ranges from 12 to 14 pounds. I bought it for 12 pounds today in one of the local supermarkets and most supermarkets stock a Louis Jadot wine one or another of several wines they do. Okay talking of you bought this from a supermarket last yeah. week's wine um the Grey Wacky Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Um, we had a lot of feedback on that, that um, a lot of people could not get hold of that wine, both here in Scotland, in the USA. Yeah. So last week's wine was not a supermarket wine. No, no. It's more a specialist wine shop wine. Uh, some of the bigger wine, wine merchants that have got sort of national wine merchants stock it as well like Majestic Wines have it, but it, the price they're charging for it seems to be a wee bit at the top end. I said last week between 14 and 17 pounds, but Majestic are actually selling it for 21 pounds now, which is a way up, way up. Some of the smaller wine merchants are selling it for 17, but then again, you have to buy six bottles in some of the smaller merchants, or six mixed bottles to, to, to get that price. What about the Wine Society? Do they stock it? No, no. no. I, Last year, well, earlier in the year, should I say, when we were in Milton Keynes, when we went to Costco uh, with Costa, they had it uh, reasonably priced. It was 14, 15 pounds plus VAT, in around there, and they certainly had it at that time. Our ingredients today are chicken. We're going to make a chicken breast, and we're going to stuff the chicken breast with spinach, shallots, and feta cheese and we're going to just use the juices that come off of that and make a, a lemony sauce and we're going to have that with some asparagus and I'm going to also have some potatoes of course. Okay. Chicken of course. We have spinach. This spinach I've already wilted it down just to save some time at, 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 at making the video but you can, you can see how I wilt down spinach in the, a video for a couple of weeks ago with the lamb. Okay we'll link okay. that below. Yep we have shallots, a teaspoon of garlic as well feta cheese, tomato puree, of course we've got salt and pepper 
and we'll be using some oregano, dill and some crushed chilies and we have some lemon juice and then we have some nice asparagus spears here some parmesan which we're going to put over the asparagus to finish them off and some potatoes which I've just cut up like thick chips and I've put some various herbs and spices on them and so they're one. like potato wedges yeah I'm basically. going to put them in the oven yeah okay. and some olive oil for cooking and this is all keto friendly for moi yeah apart from the, the potatoes yeah the potatoes for moi. <laughs> so first we are heating the oven so Rico can cook his potatoes This just allows the wine to open up and it really does make a difference when you decant the wine. Oil going into the pan. So have you heated the pan I've first? Just, just switched it on now. So just going to heat the oil. Just add in the shallots and the garlic to the pan. Just add in the potatoes to the tray and you've just seasoned them uh, with Paprika, oil, salt, pepper, some paprika, just some other spices, and yeah, just, just whatever you like, curry powder, curry powder, and then yeah. they just go into the oven. So the shallots have cooked down now. So just until they're soft. Can I, I'm going to add some tomato puree. Okay. A teaspoon of tomato puree in there. Not too much tomato because it's not really keto friendly. Cooking off the tomato now. Yes. And we'll add the spinach, which has been wilted down as I said. Turn this down slightly. And we'll start seasoning at this point. Salt. Black pepper, and we'll add about half a teaspoon of dill, and the same legano. Your chili flakes just for a little bit of heat. So if you like it hot, you add more. If you don't yeah. like it hot, you don't add any. You just adjust. I can't eat things that are too hot as no. much as I love them. That's right. And you could use fresh chili. Does it? Um, you could use fresh herbs, which you would only add at the end, or fresh dill anyway. Why would you add them at the end? Because the flavour comes out at the end. Dry herbs need time to cook off a little, where the fresh herb gives you that instant flavour. I'm going to add a tablespoon of white wine to this. And just a wee Is lemon. lemon. Just let that cook down, finish off, stay hot, and we'll get the the chicken's ready to get stuffed. Now we'll crumble in some feta cheese. Looks quite Halloween like. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Yucky! No, it doesn't look the prettiest, does it? All that glitters is not gold. And this is the other way around. <laughs> the hob has been turned off, so it's just going to sit in the pan now. So we're now going to get the chicken fillets yep. ready to stuff. Ideally, if they were a little thicker, I would have sliced them in the middle. Mm -hmm. But these ones have came with this wee fillet at the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pat them out slightly 
and then fold them over. Right, okay. okay. So that's two options. If you've got yep. thick fillets, you slice them on that side. Yep. yep. But you're going to show a different way now. Yes. So just giving them a wee bash out. Is this what we call butterflied? Absolutely. Well, it's called battered. <laughs> There's one. Simple as that. Yep. Sometimes when I fill chicken, I cling film it to tighten it to put it into shape. But I'm not going to do that with this because the spinach is soft inside, the feta cheese is soft. Sometimes when you squeeze it like that, it just doesn't hold as well. I'm just going to cook them like that, and I might put the odd cocktail stick in here to just hold to, it. To, to hold it together. So you're just going to do that with the other two as well. So just spinach into the chicken and then just fold it over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just use the same pan because everything that's left in that pan will deglaze it at the end and that's going to be our sauce. Okay. That's going to be our drizzle over the chicken. So the pan is as it was, it hasn't been washed, just nope. adding oil to the pan. So that's the oil heated up. So we're just going to put these in. How can this be a diet when this is keto friendly? So remember, once you've touched the chicken, you need to wash your hands, which is what Rico is doing right now. So now the asparagus is going to go into the microwave for a couple of minutes. And then we're going to We sprinkle the dough again, just on the chicken. And of the oregano. No more chilli because it's just for the background. Well we tasted the sauce that went inside and there was enough chilli and there was enough salt so we didn't add any more salt. So when you taste your spinach you can adjust your seasoning for the chicken. Okay, now it's time to turn the chicken and you can tell it's ready because it just turns easily without sticking to the pan. Yummy. Okay, so once both sides have been browned, it's going to go into the oven. So it's just sitting in a tray. in the oven now at 200 degrees with the potatoes for about 15 20 minutes the asparagus is now out of the microwave oh we're going to get the asparagus ready just to go under the grill just a quick little bit of seasoning not too much pepper pepper and we've got these parmesan flakes which are going to go on top As soon as I take the chicken and the potatoes out, we'll put that under the grill. Okay, so you've got this pan heating just now. Yes, we're going to deglaze it and add some lemon juice to it, and that'll be our 
our sauce. Yeah. Just give it another couple of seconds. I have to be the pot. Add in the wine. Some oregano in there. So just now going to reduce the sauce down. Out comes the chicken. Yes, yep, really good. And Rico's potatoes. Potatoes. Just put these here too. Now we're going to put the asparagus to grill. And we'll be ready to plate. Just adding lemon juice. How good do they look? That's obviously Rico's. Correct. Just add in some of the juice from the chicken into the pan. Now plating mine. Add in some sauce. <laughs> How good does that look? Shall we taste the wine now? Can't we? Subtle sort of raspberry and plum. Very medium bodied as you can see by the colour, but that's what you'd expect from a Pinot Noir. Lovely flavour in the palate. Lovely wine. Cheers, honey. What the tannins like? Nice and soft. Mm. Nice and soft and not heavy. Not heavy at all. Okay, let's taste this. It's almost a shame to uh, spoil your uh, work of art here, Rico. I didn't realise it was a work of art, honey. Oh, of course it's a work of art. Delicious. Is, is it still as spicy? It's as still, yeah, it's still spicy. And having spinach and asparagus is fine. I kind of wondered having the two yeah. green veg, but actually works really well. And the sauce is just light enough that it doesn't um, overpower the other flavours. Right, let's taste the wine. Quite a light wine. Yeah. You're absolutely right about the tannins, which is what I don't like about red wines. I don't like heavy tannins. It's quite an easy drinking red, I would say. Red burgundies, are, as a general rule, 
and white burgundies as a general rule were always very very expensive but the past maybe five or six years as with the whites as with the reds a lot of these entry level wines that's why I've, I've called it an entry level wine 12 pounds a bottle it's about it's, you're getting into red burgundy and they have improved dramatically the quality of these entry level wines and I think this is a wonderful wine and the red complements this now you know a lot yes. of people are afraid of having red wines with white meats but it's no, like I've no, always said it's no. a matter of your own taste and you shouldn't be dictated to as to having red with red meats and white with white meats it's really yeah. a matter no. of taste but I think this really does compliment the, the, this. There's actually, a, I saw another wine today which caught my eye. Um, it was a GSM, it's an Australian. It's three grapes, GS and M, Grenache, Shiraz and Moon Verde. Uh, and I'm going to buy that, but it's a big wine. It's a heavy wine. Uh, so you thought it would overpower this? Yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought it for this meal. That's why I bought this, this red burgundy, this Pinot Noir because Quite I knew the tannins are light, it's fruity enough and it just it goes well with chicken. Okay. Cheers. Happy Halloween. Cheers. Happy Halloween everybody. Happy Halloween. And if you would like to see more videos from us, I'm going to like one here, here. And if you're not already subscribed, all you have to do is press the A right here. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.